My Hero Academia. This is My Hero Academia Chapter 353, Endeavor. Uh, we are opening up with really nice color pages from Horikoshi. Um, well, we're starting with My Hero Academia. Yeah, we usually do. It's usually One Piece, then My Hero. We don't have One Piece this yeah, week. Yeah, you're right. I, I guess I'm just... Yeah, I was thrown off a little bit. Get it together, man. Yeah, my bad. <laughs> my bad. <laughs> Let's switch this back over here. Yeah. Uh, last we left off, uh, Dobby and Todoroki have exchanged ultimate techniques. Uh, Dobby was basically frying all the other ones, all the other characters in the background. Burnin survived. Uh, she made it. I think everybody made it, really. Dobby. And, uh, you know, Dobby has officially been declared the loser of the battle of the Todorokis. Uh, everybody's like, whoa, hell yeah. It's a morale boost for pretty much everyone because Todoroki securing the first win for heroes in a really long time. Like the first real significant win. Good for him, man. Uh, I mean, we'll see. But so far, I mean, this is a pretty big win. One of the commanders and a big deal at that. It is a very good win tentatively. Tentatively. and <laughs> I'm pretty sure this is legit. But I could be wrong. <laughs> I could be incorrect. I'm fully open for that. But, you know, everybody gets uh, psyched out. Uh, a lot of the pages are just pretty much everyone hearing the news and being like, oh, hell yeah, he won. Um, but, you know, the villains are there's some cool designed villains. This weird guy with the skull gas mask thing. He comes up and he's like, it was a ruse on their part, uh, pretending to be scattered. Like, oh, wait, is this guy a hero or what? Oh, no, no, he's a villain. Because he Definitely starts. Definitely a villain. Yeah, he starts talking shit about midnight. And he's like, the era of liberation. He's not even named. He's not. He's what? I don't think he's even named. No, not yet, at least. Um, Maybe he was named earlier in the process when he I, was talking about the villain captains. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, if he was, I, I seriously don't remember. But, um,. Yeah, he starts like talking about how like they must have foreseen that our detached force would try to steal back this this powerhouse. However, they've squandered their resources. The purveyors of falsehoods will be crushed beneath their our roots, just like that UA teacher. And um, oh yeah, um, Acid Girl, I forget her name. I don't know why. Uh, her name, her superhero name is Pinky, but uh, Chihiro Asha Ashihiro. No, Ashido. It's Ashido. Ew. She 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 hears that shit. She says, "What? What'd you say?" Uh, Kirishima also it's pulls up. Glint in her eyes. Yeah, Kirishima also pulls up so they can do a two a two like two on one, I guess, against this guy. Um, yeah, Kirishima, very cool. Um, we uh get like little views uh in the National Tacoba Arena. Sugar Man and uh, Ojiro are fighting as well. Uh, you know, they're really like, curious panel with Cerro. Yeah, Cerro is there. He does have three dots going. Hmm, very, very curious. I hope he's not a traitor. <laughs> oh, no, no, oh, no way. No, I'm over that right now. I'm not gonna lie. It is funny because, like, everybody else is pretty much happy and celebrating, and Cerro's the only you could one be thinking, like, is this for real? Like, hmm. is he really down? <laughs> hmm. We'll see. Or maybe he's contemplating that why did he decide to become a hero when his power is duct tape? <laughs> it's not even duct tape. It's, uh... I mean, you know, he's got pretty powerful tape, you know? Sarah's yeah, cool. Like, do you see everything that's going down? He's probably like, damn. <laughs> <laughs> damn. Maybe I could have just been in the office or something. <laughs> I would have a for sure job. Unlimited tape in the office? Oh, sure. They would never have to worry about that supply. They'd save so much money. Yeah. Annually. Yeah. Meanwhile, with the Battle of Shigaraki, Bakugo actually throws some words of praise towards Todoroki. Mm -hmm. uh, he's like, didn't expect any less for, didn't expect any less from you, Todoroki. Um, also confirming that there is at least one person still alive. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So far, Shigaraki has not absolutely murdered everyone there. Um... <laughs> Fat Gum and Aoyama are fighting against this weird uh, dude named Kuneda, who's a Tartarus escapee. Um, and uh, they're talking about how, like, considering this matchup, it's clear that the priority with those cages was to split us up. But uh, as for you thought that you could just, like, take us dregs on your own, though. So 
you know that you separated us like by who you thought you could just like figure out uh and he's like on what basis though trust hope perhaps such things are invisible to the naked eye coat this planet uh such a, such things invisible to the eye coat this planet like an oppressive membrane uh all right dude <laughs> so yeah he's like uh because my because of dictator's failure my turn can my turn never came around but now i can demonstrate my utility for uh, to all for one as one of his assassins um so he see and then he peeps aoyama he's like and the dregs that i mentioned will all be coming for you aoyama you fucking snitch the bat of aesop is the the bat of aesop i think it's like kind of uh you know calling him a liar basically like a like a two-faced guy because aesop's fables you know it's like yeah, something like that. I don't know. It's a teller of tall tales. That's a okay. It's a it's like a liar thing. type of thing, I guess. Okay. Anyway, they basically. I would ask you to look that up, Brian. Maybe just specifically the bat of Aesop, but yeah, I don't know what he means by that. I, that's that's what my interpretation is. Is that like he's just like mm, you, fucking lying bitch. <laughs> you betrayed us. You double double crossed us. You gave us the bloody cross. <laughs> Um, meanwhile something else surprising happens Uh, apparently we cut over to spinner's battle and he's facing off against uh shoji and the animal guy i forget his name right now uh and he's giant people battle yeah he's he's giant now um yeah i I think like they're implying in the next page that uh, All for One gave him this power specifically as well, in the creepiest way possible. Yeah, you know, like with his mouth, like taking his snout and is like, "Look over here now." It's weird. Anyway, so he's giant now, and he has like a multiple. He has his dumb several s- several knife sword, um, and uh, he's just freaking out because he just heard that Dobby has been taken down. And he's like, "No way! They're fucking lying. This has this has to be information warfare. That's all it is." Um, he's thinking to him. He's remembering to how like Dobby left before everyone, and he's like, "He always had everything, a reason to live on, a goal, power, all the things I lacked. His convictions could never fail him, right?" Um, and so he goes off uh, and commands his heteromorph uh, army to uh, attack Shoji. And Shoji uh, gives a smile, just like, Todoroki, I'm so proud I made it into your class. Um, meanwhile, we cut back to Todoroki, who's uh, just kind of like recovering. Uh, Ida has him in his arms, and uh, he apologized to Ida because uh, the ice attack that he did kind of stalled uh, Ida's engines. Uh, Ida's like, don't worry, you don't have nothing to apologize for. Um, and... Um, one of the heroes walks up oh, to Dobby. He froze everything. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, because he froze everything. Uh, and one of the heroes walks up to Dobby, and he's like, "How is he still alive in this state?" And um, all you see is just like I guess the embers of his, uh, his of his flame, kind of like keeping his heart alive. I guess um, it could mean that this. Yeah, battle- yeah, that, I thought that was his eye glowing at first. No. Now I looked at it again. It's like in the center of his chest, like Iron Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So- so this could mean that this sto- this battle is not necessarily over. Um, there could be like fi- one final suicide attack left. I can yeah, see that happening. He's, he seems like he's about to blow himself up. Yeah, something like that. Um, and meanwhile, uh, back to Endeavor, uh, the titular character of this chapter. Uh, he's just like his face is frozen, uh, just like sheesh. Uh, after hearing his sons have finished their battle and uh, Todoroki came out victorious. Um, and all for one is just talking shit. He's just like, what does that oh, face? Yeah. What does that face imply? Affection, grief. You refuse to take a good look at Toya, for- foisting him, foisting the task onto little Shoto instead. That must have been your decision, right? Um, and you justify that choice by being here. Heroes just have so much to protect, right? This is why you yeah. lose, number one. And uh, as he has like five different quirks sprouting from five all five of his fingers uh 
pretty sick. Yeah, pretty cool. <laughs> that's the cool. that's the end of this chapter. Uh, Josh, what did you think about this chapter? This chapter left me with a lot to think about. Actually, hmm. um, where to start? Where to start? Let me go back to the beginning of the um, the chapter real quick. Yeah, I'm take this page by page. So. I just want to reiterate that I thought the Nomos initially were such interesting characters or villains, you know, obstacles to face. And they've just kind of been reduced to these background monsters. And that really bothers me. I'm not going to lie. It blows mine every time they show that. Um, but yeah, I, I, I gotta bring that up. It's such a missed opportunity because those are the, some of the best parts of the manga in my in my you know. Mm-hmm. Based on what we've seen, um, I like that they gave us each of these little zones just to be clear about where all of the kids are at. Um, it kind of gives me hope that we're gonna see at least a chapter in you know dedicated to each situation. I think that would be nice. That would make me pretty happy, I'll tell you that. I wouldn't I'm not really expecting any more than that. Um this new situation with uh with Fat Gum and now Yama uh, uh fighting Kuneda, the uh Tartarus escapee. Yeah. Plant plant guy. I'm I'm intrigued by this. You know, I, I really like Fat Gum. I think I'm not mad seeing him again, you know? I guess I kind of roll my eyes just a little bit at first because Man, would it have been nice to get a different hero <laughs> fleshed out? Um, but he's a fan favorite. I'd be lying if I said I didn't want to see him. And it looks like he's gonna fight with Aoyama. So this, I guess we're gonna get kind of low key redemption or something like that. At least we're gonna see Aoyama in a fight. Yeah, in an extended battle. That's cool. Yeah, that's cool. Was that's also cool. Was all we could have not got that. True. Right? Uh, were those all your thoughts? Oh, you got more. <laughs> no, it's a little bit more. I'm just going through a little bit of like I just had a lot of things in my head while um like just brief thoughts while I was reading the chapter. So the situation with Spinner, right? Um I mentioned before he was one of my favorite characters in the League of Villains, mostly because he hadn't been expl- explored that much and I thought he had a lot more depth to him because of how poetic he was and like dedicated, you know, he yeah, super dedicated to a cause. Um, but I'm not gonna say I'm disappointed to see him just enlarged, but because I think it was pretty clear that he doesn't really have an extra ability aside from just being a reptile, <laughs> and I guess whatever biological advantages he gets from that, you know, whether that's combat related or not. But regardless, um, I. I still think there is a lot of room for there to be an interesting fight as long as the dialogue is really on point. Um, but man, I'd really hate if it was reduced to a situation where some of the heroes, the uh, the non-humanoid, what, what was the name? The the more uh, the heteromorphs, I believe. The heteromorph. I hope it doesn't boil down to the head or more hero saying, hey, we're fucking ugly, too, and we dealt with it, and we're not villains, so you should deal with it, too, or something. Like, I hope it doesn't... It, that doesn't become the message. Yeah. Uh, I think I think there's a lot of potential for, for, for nuance and, and a good conversation about, you know, the types of people who are oppressed, even in a hero society. So, yeah, looking forward to the potential fights. I don't know which one we're going to get next specifically. Maybe we're going to get this Endeavor and, and Hawk situation, which I'm not super hype about. I kind of expect all for one to just, like, clap them. <laughs> Am I off? No, I think... Uh, you can go ahead and rebut now if y'all got any rebuttals. No, yeah, that, ma- that makes sense. Sort. I don't really, I don't see what... What am I supposed to be excited for? I mean, I'd love to see Endeavor and Hawks go all out against somebody, but it's just so clear. I mean, you can make the argument that if this was in any other series and you had these guys going against, you know, one of the main villains, 
obviously they're not going to be the guys that deal with him. It's probably going to be Mitaria or somebody else that's of kind of greater stature. It's not their fight. Yeah, they're the number one and two heroes respectively, but this is awful one. This guy is ancient. Or not ancient. He's older than most. <laughs> he's he's really you know, old. He's he's mad old. You know they 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 not impersonal with them. He's gonna talk his shit, but he talks often one talks his shit to everybody. So this is I'm not pessimistic about the fight. I'm just saying that I'm not like oh man, this is I'm not I'm not very excited for this. However, I do believe it might be really dope and executed well if they give it up filthy. Like in that normal fight from earlier in the series, this could be something special. Yeah. I'm looking forward to all these potential fights. Yeah. Uh Brian, what did you think? Um I like this chapter. Uh mainly because it it does kinda cause look, here's the thing. Say what you want about my hero academia, right? Say that it the pacing's wrong, say all that shit, it's fine. But I will. <laughs> one thing that you cannot take away from My Hero Academia is how Horikoshi writes these big, uh, these big kind of war raid like fucking situations. He knows how to constantly keep you on your feet, like keep you on your toes, wondering what the fuck is gonna happen next. I'm pretty sure that with that Sarah panel, he did plant a seed of something being it's almost too good to be true you know like all like all the success they're facing right now it's too good to be true and there's going to be a horikoshi twist coming soon when it comes to turning the tides of battle um i think one for all is a lot smarter than uh than like we give him credit for i think he definitely cooked up something a little more special um and I'm honestly, re- I really am looking forward to the all um, to the Endeavor all for one fight, hmm. mainly because Endeavor's fights are always so fucking entertaining. They you are. Know? I mean, that's like true. His fight against his fight against uh, Shigaraki, his fight against fucking the the flying Nomu, like they're. They're not just like regular, oh, this is the hero going to win shit. It's always like a humbling fight. Like, it's never easy for Endeavor. And I think that's interesting. Like, it's not like uh, All Might would just come in and fucking sweep and nobody will be able to do shit to him. It's literally a dude who's trying to fill the shoes that he wanted to fill so desperately, you know? Yeah. No, that makes total sense. Um, and I, I really love I really love Endeavor's character arc and you know, I really enjoy his, his fight scenes. So I have that to look forward to. Yeah. Uh were those like your thoughts? Yeah. Uh cool. I, I also like this chapter. Um I thought that uh things are going okay. I mean like this is it, it's not that things are going so overwhelmingly good for everyone. Um this is their first W in a long time and yeah. so far like nobody else has won yet so you know i think this was more of a little morale boost for everyone else than um than anything um but um yeah i, I just like the little setups here um we we do we have said in the past that uh horikoshi's pacing is uh not what it used to be for various reasons whatever you want to call it whether it's uh his uh, alleged burnout whether you know he's just trying to like push the series along uh, but at the same time, I thought this was like one of a, one of the better chapters in that form where, you know, you you get to jump around to different places. You get to see, uh, you know, the different fights and how they're going, uh, who's where for the most part. They're setting up these battles uh, and, and it's got me kind of excited and, and high hopes that they'll uh, actually like give one or two of these fights like their own time of day. Um, one thing that got me particularly excited, excited was Shoji, because um, he's he's a character I've been like wanting to see a lot more of uh, for a long time. He pulls up every now and then and contributes a decent amount. Like I remember back when they were doing the first like camp when they were in their training camp, and uh, he was there to save Midoriya uh, from uh, 
from Todoroki, uh, not from Todoroki, from Tokoyami when he was losing control of his powers. Um, he could, he pulls up every now and then, and you know you could tell that there's like a backstory with his mask because they hinted at that there's like a very specific reason as to why he wears it. So um, I'm I'm very looking forward to it, especially since like you know obviously his char- his I feel like his battle in particular is going to be very important because uh, he's fighting one of the generals, one of the original like members that have like a message to them a theme to their character like spinner which is like basically um oppression discrimination you know uh hatred based on like outward uh appearances so i'm excited to see how shoji handles it um and hopefully we do get that time so that's something i'm optimistic about um i i I was also kind of like weirded out by spinner's power but i guess like you got to buff him up for this final fight because he's just a lizard man <laughs> like what are you gonna do man be mad about it I, no i i'm right? i wasn't mad about it you know what i mean like it was, I was really big speaking out thinking out loud yeah myself. that was my reaction like what are you gonna do josh <laughs> yeah no i was uh, i was a little taken aback he is giant and buff now um but that was i guess that's cool we'll see how it goes um with that uh as far as the Endeavor stuff goes, uh, I agree with Brian. I think uh, Endeavor is very much the Vegeta of this series, where um, his battles have the potential to be the more interesting ones, but they're always very humbling. You know, uh, <laughs> they're always interesting, but they he, they're interesting because how is he going to lose this time? You know, like what lessons he's going to learn from this, or if you know, if by some miracle he turns it out and wins. I mean, all for one is not who he used to be. He is like currently transferring his consciousness into Shigaraki kind of as they speak. So, True. you know, uh, all for one is not as strong, but you know, he could very well still be strong enough to handle both of them. Uh, and uh, it, with relative ease. Uh, but I, I am interested in, in what's going on and I'm cautiously optimistic about how this is all going to turn out. Um, excited for what's to come for, uh, the, my hero battles. Uh, I don't have any more thoughts in this situation. Uh, do you guys have any more uh, rebuttals? Anything? Yeah, yeah, I have something I wanted to mention. Just to be clear, like when, um, when, from what I remember about about the um, the heteromorphs being oppressed, it was deeper than just people thinking like, oh, they were like just ugly. Yeah. Um. It. I think there was something said where. It, like. A lot of criminals tend to be heteromorphs mm-hmm. because they're pushed into that kind of lifestyle systemically, mm-hmm. you know? So, you know, just, I just want everyone to be clear on that. Like, that's kind of what these heteromorphs are fighting for. And it's, that's why I'm kind of like, I want to see how, how this is executed. Uh, you know, I hope it's not just swept under the rug, like, rug, like, oh, I'll get over it. Yeah. And, be a good person, you know, like we get there's things that need to be fixed and they're outraged. But, you know, I'm not about to take the side of a homicidal maniac, so No, yeah. I mean, you know, uh I feel like we're co- I'm, I'm I'm looking forward to the to their fight. I, I do I I want like I mentioned already, I want to see that how the exposition goes. Yeah. I mean I feel like Horikoshi had like such he really wanted to flesh these ideas out. And because particularly the 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 prevailing like news is that like apparently the the audience in Japan really doesn't like the villains, so uh, that's what kind of like pushed Horikoshi to kind of like speed this up. If this is true, I don't know how true it is, but according to an interview, like he talked about how the League of Villains was was actually received very poorly. Um, which is wow. very interesting. It's kind of it's very interesting to see kind of like how in America, like I think like the consensus is that the villains are really interesting and kind of the best part almost of My Hero Academia or one of the stronger yeah, parts. Most 100%. people I hear talk about the anime when they when they my villain uh, Academia art came, they were all just blown away. Mm-hmm. Especially so like the younger like the younger audience, which you know I get it. I mean, I love and My it, Villain Academia. Uh, I don't even think it's like an edge thing. I, he he made these characters interesting because they were deeper than just these 
cartoonish style villains that just wanted to cause harm because they felt like it. They all, well, you know, they are, they do cause harm because <laughs> they feel like it, but they um, they had a lot of different motivations that I felt Horikoshi wanted to make a point of in society, mm-hmm. like about these, like why people are criminals or pushed to be criminals, you know, the ones that can't help it, the ones that can't help it, but are pushed to do it anyway, et cetera, et cetera. That was one of the most interesting aspects of the villain side of this. And then, yeah, yeah, that's just really sad that 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 is confirmed. That is actually the case. That's not a mystery, right? Like we, that is a well-known fact that the Japanese audience, generally speaking, did not care for the villains, and that's sad because they're supposed to be a. I wonder what that. I don't. I don't. I don't want to judge a whole entire country off of how they receive one comic, but it does make me think. Yeah, I makes you think about that Jujutsu Kaisen chapter about um the over the the over um um jailing of 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 criminals there like they have a they they kind of have a mass incarceration issue as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. So it's yeah. All this is interesting. All this to say is that I'm kind of I'm kind of inclined to give Horikoshi a little bit of leeway. Because we might be getting like kind of a Cliff Notes version of everything that he wanted to do. Uh, yeah. So yeah. I'm willing to like look at it like what did he mean to say as opposed to kind of how he was executed. I'm still going to be like, you know, within reason, <laughs> you know, um, but I, I, I do want to give him that kind of leeway because he does deserve it. I think he's a very talented manga, uh, manga artist, 100 percent a great writer. So, you know, uh, I, yeah, I just definitely when he's when he wants to be you know when he's in the mood to be that's for sure Mm -hmm. so honestly i i kind of wish my hero academia was on a more mature uh manga line yeah maybe or at least on 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 like a publisher that's not as popular as jump i feel like my hero academia would have really thrived under like like the same people who publish um like Attack on Titan or some shit like that, because at least there you know what you're up for. Like you know what you're in for. It's not just like sparkly, like you know, cookie cutter or shonen, you know. And mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, like it- a lot of these issues that this guy covers are extremely, extremely like set in reality. You know, like there's a lot of shit that he covers. Like he covers like parental abuse he covers a lot of complex issues like redemption from that like it's just too it's just too much to have exposed on such a mainstream line especially if your country doesn't really you know speak well on that shit or does not want you to be talking about that stuff on such a big scale Mm -hmm. you know like so i feel like if it was more if it was more, if it was on a more mature line, I feel like Horikoshi would have had so much more to work with. Yeah. I just feel like it really sucks. Yeah. So America, Horikoshi. <laughs> yeah, Ready I mean for Marvel or something. No, let DC because because Disney will fucking ruin ruin this shit. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Let DC pick this shit up, please. Man, go to Image. Go to Image. I guess they'll they don't have any other lines the uh, Horikoshi could do whatever he wants like he's in his own universe he's not, he doesn't have to share with Marvel or DC Bob Ryan Academia <laughs> um yeah 